let's say you have some data, right? So I'm going to say big letters, data. You have low values, medium values, and high values. So this line right here, this is going to represent all of my data values. I've got some low values, some medium values, and some high values, all right? So somewhere here in the middle of this data set, remember we talked about the median. We talked about the median. Now we're relabeling that in this section. We're calling it the second quartile, which is also called the median. It literally is the middle of the data set. So the second quartile, Q2, is called the median. Now, if you look on, the, on this side here, uh, because the median cuts everything in half, then if you kind of were to look at your data, again, I'll draw like another arrow right here. This is what we call the lower half of your data set, and this is what we call the upper half of your data set. All right? So if you look at the lower half from here to the median, or here to Q2, and if you look right in the middle there and kind of look at another median between here and what you found right here, this would be Q1. And then if you look at the upper half and find the middle right here, this would be Q3. So literally, the quartiles divide your data set up, just like what's on the board. You have the very middle of the road called Q2, which is the median, and then everything lower than that, you chop it in half again, that's called Q1, and then of everything above that, you chop it again, and it's called Q3. Now the thing that's weird about quartiles, you know, when I hear the word quartiles, I think quarters, right? So I think you're gonna like, have four quartiles, right? So you gotta get that out of your head. There are three numbers, Q1, Q2, and Q3, that refers to the quartiles. There is no Q4. There's no fourth quarter like that. So the reason it comes uses the word quartiles is because here's region number one, region number two, region number three, region number four. So your quartiles do divide your data set into four regions. But in terms of what you write down, you only have three quartiles. They're Q1, Q2, and Q3. All right, so, Basically, what you have, if I have to kind of summarize it here, Q1 is called the first quartile, and it's the number, it is the number greater than or equal to 25 of the data, 25% of the data. All right? Which makes sense because Q1 is here. So if you have data all down here, Q1 is greater than 25%. This is 25% of the data. Q1 is the number just right at 25% of the data. All right? And then we have Q2. So I'll say it's the number greater than or equal to 50% of the data. And that makes sense because the median Q2 is greater than 50%, greater than or equal to 50% of the data. And then Q3 is the number, what do you think it's gonna be? 75% of the data. And that makes sense because Q3, since you're all the way over here, this is first quarter, second quarter, third quarter of the data, you're greater than or equal to 75% of the data. And the last thing I wanna point out is Q2, as I've already said, is the median of your data set. In order to find Q1, really what you end up doing is kind of looking at the data only from the beginning up until the median, and you find a new median in, in the middle, and we call that Q1. In order to find Q3, we only look at data from the median, or Q2, up until the end. We find a new median here, we call it Q3. So really, finding quartiles is just an exercise in finding medians, and we've found many medians, and we already learned how to do that. First, you find Q2, which is the median of the whole thing. That chops your data set to upper half and lower half, and then you just find the median of the upper and the median of the lower, and those are your quartiles. So it's not a terribly hard concept, so let's go ahead and do uh, some examples. So let's find the quartiles for the following data. 8, 9, 2, 10, 3, 5, 7, 12, and 15. So these are our data points. Remember, in order to find quartiles, we, which is basically finding medians, we want to order the data. That's kind of what we always do with these guys. So we want to go ahead and put them in order. So the lowest thing we have is two. So we want to go from there. Two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, and fifteen. And I think you would agree this is everything. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Everything is put into order. Now the first thing we do is we go and find the middle of the entire data set. 
So we have nine values. So if we look, this value, the eight, is exactly in the middle because I have four values below it and four values above it. So this one really is Q2 because that's the median uh, of the entire thing. So we've already found one of them. Now, whenever we try to find Q1 or Q3, you gotta realize that, that this median divides the data set into a lower half and it also divides it into an upper half. Now, for the lower half, in order to find Q1, we need to go and look at that. So we look at the lower half, which is just two, three, five, seven, and we need to include eight because you know, the data is cut into two pieces. We can't, just, we can't just look at this guy. We can't just look at these four values as being the lower half of the data set because then we're leaving out our eight. It does participate, right? So when you have an odd number of values in your data set, then the middle number is gonna be your median and you need to go ahead and include it in the upper and the lower half. You gotta choose some convention and that's what we choose to do. We choose to include it. So now here's our lower half. We look for a median value. The five is median of what's in here. So this is Q1. Very, very simple. And then we go over here and we do exactly the same thing over here. So we look at the upper half. And we have to do the same thing. You cannot just throw away data. You have to, to, to include it somehow. And the fairest way to include it is to go ahead and keep this middle value in the lower half of the data and in the upper half of the data if you have an odd number of values like we do here. So now we have six values to choose from, and I think you would agree that the number 10 is in the middle, so that's Q3. So if you were to write down the quartiles of this data set, you would say Q1 is equal to 5, Q2 is equal to 8, and Q3 is equal to 10. So this is 10. And these are the three values, five, eight, and 10. All right, it's really not too hard. Now we're gonna do one more because I would like to show you what happens when your data set is not odd like that, when your data set's even. And so I would like to find the quartiles of these numbers, 10, 12, 14, 15, 14, 16, 17, 18, 10, 19, 17, 17, a lot more data values. Um, but just like always, we need to order them. We need to order them. So let's order them to find medians. Of course, we have to do that. Lowest value I have here is 10. I have two 10s. So I have 10 and 10, then 12, then 14, then 14, then 15, then 16. Then I have three 17s in this data set, so that comes next. Then I have an 18, and then I have a 19. Let's double check. All right, so let's check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's why I've done my ordering correctly, I think, at least. So what I want to do is look and find the middle value, which is going to be Q2, or the median here. And since I have 12 values, there's not going to be any single value in the middle. So really the two middle values are 15 and 16. And the average here, I don't even need to calculate it because you know that halfway between here, 15 plus 16 divided by 2, you're going to get 15.5. So that is basically the median of this data set. You kind of average the middle two values and you get 15.5. All right. And then let's go and take a look at the lower half of this data set. So for the lower half, we have 10, 10, 12, 14, 14, and now we need to include 15 because the lower half of the data set is one half of the data set. This is one, two, three, four, five, six values. This is one, two, three, four, five, six values. This is why I wanted to do this problem. Whenever you have an even number of data values, then for your lower half, you need to go all the way up and include half of the values. And then here for the upper half, we'll have these values. It's a little bit different than what we did last time when we had an even number, but this is how you handle it in both cases. So then we go and look, what's the median here? And we see we don't have a single number in the middle. We have 12 and 14 and you know that the average value between here is just 13. That's halfway between 12 and 14. So that's the first quartile. Now finally for the upper half, we have 15, 16, 17, 17, 17, 18, 19. All right, 
we have six values. We chose to include, uh, actually I was wrong, we don't include 15, make sure we're all paying attention here. We include 16 because this is half of the data set. One, two, three, four, five, six values. Six values, six values, that's the upper half of the data set. And then we look here and we say, well, what do we have to calculate this median? These two 17s are right in the middle. So the upper quartile Q3 is gonna be the average value of those two numbers. And when you average the same number together, you're just gonna get 17. 17 plus 17 divided by two. And so ultimately, Q1 is 13, Q2 is 15.5, and Q3 is 17. And these are the final answers. The first quartile is 13, and then we have 15 and a half, and then we have 17. This idea of quartiles is not hard, but you need to know the difference. When we had an even number of data values, this is an even number, then for Q2, it's going to actually be the center value of your data set. For Q1, you need to have a lower half that includes the middle because you have to put it somewhere. You can't throw out data. You, so we choose to include the middle value in both the upper and the lower half to find the other quartiles. When we have an even number of data values, you average the middle two to find your median. And then when you find the lower half, you go all the way up and include that number. And when you have the upper half, you go all the way up and include that number. Again, we're not throwing any data away for any of it. And then we find the medians by averaging in all cases like, like we do. So that's how you find uh, quartiles. It's just uh, a few numbers that you pull out of these data sets uh, that just help you describe you know, what you're basically looking at. And again, you basically know that all of the data in this data set, 25% of the data lie below the value of 5. 50% lie below the value of 8, and 75% lie below the value of 10. And that's kind of, it's just kind of some key numbers to pull out that help you describe your data set. We're also going to use the concept of quartiles when we get over into uh, showing you what a box and whisker plot is, which you'll see quite a bit in statistics. And that's kind of one of the main reasons I wanted to show you this as well. Make sure you understand this and then follow me on into the next section where we will apply it to draw these box and whisker plots. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.